Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sandy Almack. I'm an artist and I work in a lot of mediums and I make projects from small and mailable things to large and frameables. And today I'm going to do a medium-ish and frameable, an eight and a half by 11 alcohol marker drawing. And it's inspired by two things. One is the story in the news about the children who survived in the rainforest all by themselves. I have been just reading up on this whole thing for a month now, over a month. I guess it was 40 days they were out in the forest by themselves and they survived. Like they were an infant up to a 14 year old girl. Like that span survived together when their mother was killed in the plane crash. It's an amazing story. I mean, I was reading up on the indigenous people there and they teach their babies how to climb trees. An infant can climb trees. That's insane. But I'm so glad they teach them that because these kids did survive. Now, that was part of what was in my brain. And I was trying to think of something else rainbowy to do this month. And I thought a rainbow forest would be good. And I combined it then with another thing that's kind of been on my radar for a while. I read an article about brontosauruses, brontosauri, and apatosauruses, apatosauri, which... I will tell you a little bit more about as we get going on this video, but I also wanted to pass on one other thing before I get started with the coloring, and that is this zipper pouch. This is for World Watercolor Month. If you are not a watercolorist, you can still buy one of the zipper pouches that they sell over at World Watercolor Month because this helps to purchase art supplies for children. And I know that all of you love the idea of letting kids have an opportunity to make art. And if you buy this thing, you can put anything in it. You can put markers in it. I am putting all of the markers that you need for the class in this bag. They will all fit in this zipper bag. And there's a lot of them because I went a little crazy doing my little rainbow forest for the class. I'll show you a preview of that at the end of this video, but all of those markers can fit in this bag and you can have a piece of my artwork on a zipper pouch. So there's a link to that in the doobly-doo, but let's get started coloring the dinosaur that's gonna go into the forest that I have already completed. Let me prepare you for the disappointment you will not see the rainforest being colored. The reason is because that rainforest is part of the class. And that one is going to be the bonus lesson in class. And it's basically combining all the other lessons and showing the students how to make a bigger picture. This one is eight and a half by 11. And in the class, we do five by sevens. But I recombined all the elements to make a whole new scene, but using the same elements you learn in the class because I want to empower students to be able to invent your own scenes, not just replicate the ones that I teach. But you'll use the same techniques for the different plants, for the lighting, for building up layers, and learning how to do the negative drawing, all the elements. But you can invent your own thing. And there is narration in that bonus video, but it's not like a, a full on tutorial because you already know how to do that stuff by the time you get to that one. But there's lots of just chatter from me and encouragement of you as an artist. So I hope that people will get something out of that lesson regardless, but you are getting to see the coloring of the dinosaur and I'm putting the shading on it first and then I'll add the texture on top. And the reason is because it's backlit and when it's backlit, that means the light is on the other side of the subject and you're just going to see a glow around the animal and you'll see how that glow develops over time because the shading is on the side that you're looking at. So if you ever get a chance to stand with the sun on the opposite side of an object, like a person, just make them stand in front of the sun and you'll see there's a glow around them. Now, Let's get to the dinosaur story. I was fascinated with this when I started doing my internet digging because I am a, I am a Googler. I sit on my phone and I will just Google things and fall down rabbit holes. And I found it fell down a dinosaur hole in this case. I wanted to draw something in one of these rainbow types of magical forests. 
And I was debating whether I would do maybe a toucan or a big cat or something. And I was talking to a friend of mine and, and mentioning that I might do dinosaurs. And then I started polling friends of mine, as she thought that was a good idea, polling friends of mine about their grandkids' favorite dinosaurs, because kids always have favorite dinosaurs, right? And of course, lots of the boys had T-Rex, et cetera, but there were some of the grandkids that liked a brontosaurus. And, you know, frankly, I liked brontosaurus. That was what Dino the dinosaur on the Flintstones was. So, you know, maybe I, I should draw a brontosaurus because I had never drawn one before. I drew lots of different types of, of dinosaurs before. But as I did my research and just started falling into the internet rabbit hole, I discovered something about the Apatosaurus and the Brontosaurus. Now, when scientists do things, they discover something and somebody names it. So like the first person that named the Apatosaurus, they found this skeleton or fossil or whatever, and they named it, they called it an Apatosaurus. And there was somebody somewhere else that was looking for things and they found another skeleton or fossil and they called it a Brontosaurus. Well, eventually, once they did more studies on all of this, they realized that these animals were really close. Maybe they're the same animal. And they decided, science decided that they were the same animal. So now who gets to keep the name? One had called it a Patasaurus, the other called it a Brontosaurus. Well, the way they flip that coin and make the decision is who named it first. The Apatosaurus was named before the Brontosaurus. So in 1903, I believe it was, they decided they were going to, you know, go with the name Apatosaurus. That was just what people should call it. And like, people didn't do that. They just kept calling it a Brontosaurus. Now, there might be all kinds of reasons for that, but I find it really weird when science says, you know, this planet is no longer a planet, like people just are supposed to go along with that, right? And people didn't do that. They just continued to call it the name of the dinosaur they wanted to call it. Well, just keep going another hundred years, people calling this Apatosaurus a Brontosaurus. And you keep going and keep going and keep going. In 2015, I believe it was, they did more research on these particular fossils and they discovered that there really is a difference between an Apatosaurus and a Brontosaurus. They are separate animals, separate species. So the Brontosaurus has now been restored to its rightful place on the, I don't know, the dinosaur tree of life or something. So it is now a justifiable separate animal. And there's all kinds of differences between them. And the references that I ended up working with were Apatosaurus references. But, you know, I'm making it up. This is a whole fantasy piece anyway. So if, if there's a dinosaur scientist who's watching this video, please don't yell at me. This is not intended to be like hyper-realistic. I just kind of look for some general references so I can draw a dinosaur and have some fun with that and put them in a rainforest. Now, I don't know if dinosaurs lived in rainforests. I have no idea, but I kind of picture when you watch those Disney cartoons and they put dinosaurs in crazy situations like, yeah, sure, they could have lived in a rainforest. Why not? So that that is my story and I'm sticking to it. And you can put all kinds of things in your magical rainforests. If you decide to take the class and you want to want to put you know, dinosaurs in them. You can put fairies in them. You can throw big cats or birds or whatever kind of animals you want in them. Any kind of thing works at all. This could even feel less like a rainforest. You could make it look more like a forest near you by doing more realistic plants rather than imaginary ones. So kind of up to you what you want to do with them. But in the class, there are three lessons. And I know three lessons is less than what I normally do, but what I wanted was something that we could get into all this detail and have really long and real-time videos with the numbers on the screen like they are here, but keep that price down because I want more people to be able to take this class because it's like so much fun to color all these beautiful rainbow colors. So here is a look at what's in the class. There are three scenes, as I said, at five by seven, so they're a little smaller than what I drew in the big picture. And I made up some trees. I made up my own plants. You can do that as well. And we'll talk about some of that. 
I can't get the idea out of my head of putting a whole row of toucans on that branch, so I might be doing that soon. I also wanted to mention, since you're still here listening, that I'm changing up the format for my email subscription to my blog posts. It's going to be more of a newsletter and have more fun stuff in it. And if you are on that list, then you will have gotten, by the time you saw this video, the first of the editions of that newsletter. So yay for you for being on top of things. I'll put a link in the doobly-doo if you're not already on that list. Thanks so much for joining me for this video. If you're interested in the class or in the zipper pouch, both of those links are in the doobly-doo down below. I hope that you will be interested in one or the other, or heck, maybe both. I will see you again very soon. Take care. Go create something every day. And I'll see you next week. Bye now.